In his lecture upon receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, Elie Wiesel recalled that until the moment of his death, the great historian Shimon Dubnov said over and over again to his companion in the Riga ghetto, Jeden schreibt und verschreibt, Jews write it all down. Ever since his monumental 10-volume World History of the Jewish People was published in Germany between 1925 and 1929, Dubnov was recognized as one of the towering Jewish intellectual personalities of the 20th century. After the Nazis came to power, Dubnov left Berlin for Riga, where he continued writing until his murder in December of 1941 in the Riga ghetto. There are different accounts of Dubnov's death. One version has him shot in the back by a Latvian collaborator. Another, provided by a Red Army officer named Jefim Herstmann, based on the testimony of a Riga survivor who claimed to have been an eyewitness, has Dubnov killed by an SS officer, Johann Siebert, who had been a student of Dubnov in Berlin and who took, took tremendous pleasure from taunting his former professor. I start with the figure of Shimon Dubnov for two reasons. To begin with, as I'm speaking here today on behalf of the World Jewish Congress, I note that Dubnov took part in the first of several formative meetings that preceded the formal establishment of this organization in 1936. On August 17 to 19, 1927, Dubnov was one of the participants at the World Conference on Human Rights in Zurich, Switzerland, where he stressed the need for an international organization that would be a seeing eye and a hearing ear for the Jewish people. According to a report in the New York Times, Dubnov gave an overview of Jewish emancipation since the French Revolution, calling minority rights for Jews the culmination of their national freedom. My more important reason for evoking Dubnov's memory is that he humanizes the Holocaust in Latvia by providing a name and a face to the victims most of whom are tragically anonymous and, and faceless. We know, of course, that the biological destruction of the Jews of Latvia began as soon as the German army crossed the frontier of the country in June 1941, a year after that once independent republic was occupied by the Soviet Union. We also know that the Jews of Latvia had a long history in the interwar period, the country had been home to some 90,000 Jews, or 5% of the total population of the country, among the highest percentages in Europe. The 40,000 Jews of Riga, the capital, accounted for some 10% of the population and were well integrated. They boasted of schools that taught in Hebrew and Yiddish and Latvian, Jews enjoyed a high degree of cultural autonomy. Shortly after occupying the city, the German Einsatzgruppen and a group of local Latvian auxiliaries shot several thousand Jews in cold blood. The participation of local Latvians in the murder of their Jewish neighbors was a noteworthy feature of the Holocaust in Latvia. In Riga, Dvinsk, Daukopus, and Libau, Liepai, ghettos were established, but most of the Jews confined in them were murdered in short order. Latvia also became the killing fields of some 20,000 German and Austrian Jews who were deported to their deaths there. The Latvian Auxiliary Security Police played a leading role in this chapter of the genocide of European Jewry and took part, together with German SS and police units, 
in the mass slaughter of at least 25,000 Jews in the Rumbula forest in November and December of 1941. At war's end, only a handful of Latvian Jews remained alive. Our task now is twofold. First, we must take charge of the historiography and memorialization of the Holocaust in Latvia by ensuring its absolute accuracy and integrity, which includes categorically refuting all efforts to glorify any of its perpetrators. Equally important, we must remember the victims of the Shoah in Latvia, not as statistics, but as individuals who deserve to be rescued from the anonymity of impersonal statistics. And in this spirit, let us begin by mourning and paying tribute to Shimon Markovich Dubnov. <laughs>